an act of terrorism. That's what President Biden is calling the racist attack at a Buffalo, New York grocery store. Ten people are dead. The majority of them are black. President Biden visited the community yesterday. What happened here is simple and straightforward. Terrorism. Terrorism. Domestic terrorism. Violence inflicted in the service of hate and the vicious thirst for power that defines one group of people being inherently inferior to any other group. The president and first lady honored the victims of that attack at the memorial that now stands outside Top Supermarket. They also met with families of the victims. And we are joined now by one of the survivors of this attack this morning, a cashier at Top Supermarket working at the exact moment the gunfire broke out. Fragrance Harris Stanfield, thank you so much for your time and joining us uh, this morning. We know your 20-year-old daughter was also working that day with you. Can you just uh, tell us what was going through your mind when you saw the attack happen? Um, yes, we're both customer service leads. Um, and um, the first thing that went through my mind when I heard the gunshots was, is it us? Are, are we being attacked or is this something that's outside? Because unfortunately, in our communities, um, many times we hear gunshots, but you're not sure if it's something that's going to engage where you are or if it's going to affect you or if it's something that's outside. So that was the first thing is to stop and, and find out if it's, if it's coming our way. Um, so we all looked toward the front door um, and we didn't know until we saw the security guard engaging the gunman that we were being hit. So um, at that point, the first instinct is to run. So I went to grab my daughter's arm, her, um, her arm pulled from me and I'm thinking it's to, you know, to start running uh, behind me and, and I ran across the front end. Uh, I heard some someone, my coworker, Morris, said to the back. So I curved around to go to the back. A customer bent down to pick up her keys. She had dropped. I stumbled to the side. Then I got my footing, kept running. Then her daughter, who was with her, thrust to try to get her footing and knocked me to the floor. I crawled on the floor a little bit. Then somehow got back to my feet uh, and just soft feet at that point and continued running to the back of the store when I realized that my daughter wasn't with me. Oh my gosh. Uh, so where, where was your daughter then? She was still in the front of the store. Oh man. Wow. And she and was crouched down at the register where I had just left, but I didn't know that until after police had cleared everything and she was outside. How is she doing now? I can only imagine yeah. how traumatic this experience is for, especially for a younger person. She is doing okay, considering mm -hmm. um, we're going to counseling, you know, we're um, meeting in group sessions and we're, we're working through the trauma. Yeah. So, I mean, this started off as a typical morning and a day for you guys, just simply going to work. Moving forward, when you're unwrapping this trauma, how do you do that? I mean, this is a lot to unpack as the days continue to go on. Um, it is. Um, we're, you know, we have counselors um, here for us, um, reserved for us for the first week. Um, all of my coworkers and I, we're, we meet up every day um, to talk and, and just to see each other and hug each other. Um, these interviews really help because you ask direct questions. So that helps the processing mm -hmm. of what happens just um, because there may be some things I'm just not thinking about. So I'm not accessing those thoughts. And then just um, we, meet, we meet with medical doctors as well to make sure we're physically okay. Um, and then going to vigils and, and spending time with the community and just um, sharing love and compassion with everyone who has been affected by this. So as you're watching, you know, the coverage of this kind of unfold since Saturday, and you're hearing that this was racially motivated and that um, this person, that they, they set out to even go to other stores and other locations if he was not apprehended at this supermarket that you work at. When you hear that, what is going through your mind that this person sought out people to kill because of the color of their skin? 
Uh, well, um, I've stated a number of times, I don't give my energy for him. I don't want him to have a platform with me, so I'm not going to talk about him at all. Um, what we talk about is that we have a very loving community, yeah. um, that we um, want to move forward in peace and we want to move forward in love and that we don't have any ill feelings towards any group of people. Um, our community is actually more diverse than you may think. It may be predominantly African American, but we have a very diverse customer base in our store. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, for, for someone to come and try to target specifically one race, um, it, it won't work there. It won't work anywhere here in Buffalo because we're more diverse than, than it looks like. Um, but you won't find us um, being hateful towards anyone, not because of this or because of anything else. Well, then let me just acknowledge you for this incredible show of resilience. Yeah. I mean, you have a lot of courage to even just come on a national mm -hmm. news show and, and talk about this and be vulnerable about it. Um, so really, thank you for doing that. I want you to talk about this top thank supermarket. Th this is more than just a grocery store. This is yeah. kind of a staple of your community, right? It is, yeah. This is, this is the only grocery store in the area. So um, taking that away actually leaves a food desert. Um, but thankfully, a lot of organizations have come and, and brought fresh produce to the citizens of the community and brought um, non-food items that would be missing at this point um, and other things that were missing because of the grocery store. Um, it's sad to think that we only have one uh, major grocery store in the area, but it's difficult, um, I'm guessing, for major markets to come into certain communities, maybe because um, they feel that something would not work there. Um, but I will tell you that the staff in the community at this particular store, because I've been there, is a family. We're all a family. We take care of each other. We're concerned with each other. We check in on each other. We look forward to seeing each other. So our regular customers, I'm seeing them now in the streets. Some have found me on Facebook. Um, we get to know each other. We know each other's stories. So it's not just coming in and getting some groceries and stopping to get some milk. It's taking the time to actually get to know someone in your community and really um, engaging with them on a compassionate level. Wow, definitely so more than a this is, this is important to us. Yeah. So yeah. well put. God, so well put. Absolutely. All right. Fragrance, thank you so much for coming on and telling us your story. Good luck to you and your daughter um, as you guys move forward. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.